What's up YouTube? Fred here. Thanks for joining me today. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, I do uh, weekly videos every Friday and I do videos about cars as well as I do uh, motorcycle videos and then kind of a, an occasional interesting video about something else mechanical that I am interested in. So today's video, I have done a, a five things I like and then a five things I don't like for the Corvette and I've done a five things I don't like for the Mini and I wanted to do five things that I do like for the Mini. Um, the Mini is a fantastic car. I've been super happy with it. For those that aren't familiar, it's a 2016 Mini Cooper S. I bought it certified pre-owned from Mini of Bedford up in New Hampshire and I got a really good deal on it. It wasn't super expensive. I got a manual uh, which I wanted. I got the all glass sunroof which is really nice. Um, I got everything spec'd out the way I wanted, but I was able to get it used, so I, I knocked about a third of the MSRP price off when I bought it. I bought the five-year warranty for it, so this thing is covered for the next five, five years. I think it's like 100,000 miles from the date I bought it. Um, so it's, it's a fantastic car, but there are five things that stand out to me that I really wanted to mention. So the first thing that I wanted to, to talk about and the first thing I really like about this car that caught me off guard was how big it is inside. Now that sounds silly. I've got a Mini. It is literally called Mini, which means small. And I'm a pretty big guy. I'm six foot four and I weigh about 220, 225. So I'm a pretty big dude and I fit completely well in this, in this car. So right now I've, let me adjust this. So right now, my driving position, I've got my knees lightly bent. You know, they're they're not straight out and they're not, you know, really crouched up. They're in a comfortable riding driving position. So when my feet are on the pedals, so my clutch leg is on the clutch, my gas pedal foot is resting on it. Um, you can see that I've got a good driving position. My shifter is right here. So I've got a good driving position. Um, what you'll find though, is that I can slide the seat back significantly further Almost to the point where right now, like, okay, so if I'm reaching forward, I'm basically just touching the ped pedals and my legs are much more close to being straight. The clutch is a little further, so there's the clutch all the way in. But I actually, that's all the way in. My leg is completely straight, which that's really surprising. I actually have to slide the seat back up, um, back into my normal driving position. This car is a lot more spacious inside than I thought. So if I have another person next to me, so... You can also see that there's a pretty good gap between the two seats. And when I'm sitting in it, I'm I'm not shoulder to shoulder with somebody. Like if I was in a Miata, something where the seats are really crammed together, um, it would be a lot, a lot less comfortable. This is actually a spacious car. So the biggest surprise of my life was basically when I got in the car for the first time and I realized that I not only fit comfortably, but I've got extra room, that there's room for passengers, the back seats are definitely small. The space between your legs, right now, the way the passenger seat is adjusted, it's about this far. So you really, you're, you're not gonna wanna put like any adults in the back seat unless it's for a real short drive. But I also could slide my seat up farther. The passenger seat is about as far back as mine, so that could be slid up. You could definitely fit four adults for in a pinch for a short drive. Probably some something like a kid, maybe up to 10 or 12 years old would probably fit. Um, but I use the back seats for storage. I have a, a trunk in the back that's actually pretty decent sized. You've got a panel you can flip up so there's underfloor storage. So it's surprising how nice the car is from a space perspective. I've got plenty of headroom. The seat, I've got it adjusted all the way down so that I have a, a little bit lower riding position. But I've actually got probably that much distance between the top of my hair and the ceiling. And then I've got a skylight or a sunroof that I actually have a little bit more, if I was right here, I've got probably that much space. Um, plenty of room. It feels bigger inside. It, it's deceptive because when I park in my garage, the few times I've pulled this in when the Corvette wasn't there, the car, I mean, it, you could almost fit two of these in my garage. It, in, and I've just got a normal size garage. It's not anything larger than what you'd normally have for a two car. You could probably fit almost two of these on one side. I'm even wondering if you could pull them in sideways somehow and fit two of these. So the size is the biggest thing that was a surprise that it's very small on the outside, but it's very big on the inside. 
So that was that was the biggest surprise for me. And one of the things I like most, because anyone who's ridden in the car has always been like, oh, no, I'll, I'll drive on my own if we're going somewhere. I don't want to ride it. You're, you're in this tiny little car. And they actually get in and they realize, wow, this is actually spacious and it feels pretty much like a normal sized car, but it's got a much smaller footprint. So that's the first thing that I really like about this car. Uh, the second thing that I really like about this car are the headlights. So I, as I said, I bought this as a CPO. I was able to specify basically everything I wanted. I went to the dealer and I said, hey, I'm interested in buying a Mini. I don't want to buy a new, but I want to get a warranty. I want to have it fully covered so I don't have to worry about maintenance or anything like that. And these are the things I want. Now, I do a lot of commuting in this. This, this was bought as a commuter car and a day-to-day -day driver, and I'm going to be putting a ton of miles on it. And one of the things that was important to me is since I'm doing a lot of night driving, especially New England in the fall and winter, uh, I wanted to be able to see well. And so there were two options. There's, there's the normal halogen headlights that the car can come with in a default setting. And one of the option packages for the car was full LED headlights. Um, it's not as common of an option. It, generally, people didn't spec them out. And actually, this was a lease car before I bought it. But this one has the LED headlights. Now, not only are they just crazy bright, they're the brightest headlights I've ever had. Uh, the Corvette previously was the brightest. That has HIDs. And so, you know, you turn on and there's like a bit of a flash and then they take a second to get bright. Um, they're very good at night. I'm very pleased with them. They're not halogen, uh, which is, it's a huge step up. The Corvette's the first vehicle I've owned that actually has really bright headlights. This is like night and day compared to that. They don't use a lot of power off the electrical system in the car. They have a really long lifespan. I think you have to get them replaced at the dealership because they're not even really designed to be changed out every year or two because they're just not going to burn out that quickly. But the light they throw, especially, you know, you put it on low beam and you've got a crisp cutoff. You've got a line. Like if you pull up to a wall or a garage door, you have a very crisp line. And you can actually see that on the left-hand side, it's lower. And then it goes up on the passenger side for oncoming traffic it's lower so that it's not blinding anybody you flip that into high beam mode and it's like the floodlights are on it's awesome it is pretty astounding to go from my tacoma which which is an 07 it's 13 years old i've got almost 200,000 miles on it and it's got just sort of your standard run-of-the-mill i think they're h7 halogen lights they are really not that good at dark, in the dark. You don't want to go above about highway speeds and especially like on back roads or in New England at night, you want to be going pretty slow, like 45, even with the high beams on, you just can't see that far ahead. This thing, this is like a sun. So the other thing that's really cool about these headlights is they are auto leveling. And I don't know if that's, I, I don't think the normal uh, halogen headlights offer that. I think it's just with the LEDs. But what I mean by that is you start the car and if you're facing a wall, like I'm in a parking garage when I drive to work, you start the car up, you'll actually see the light, the beams of light go up and down and then adjust and settle. And where you'll notice this is if you hit a sudden incline and all of a sudden the headlights are kind of aimed into the ground ahead of you, they'll actually can't upwards so that you can see better. And then when you go down a hill, they'll actually can't downwards so that you're not blinding everybody and that you're, you know, essentially like shining it on everything. You're just on the stuff you need to see in front of you. I've never had a car that does that. I don't believe they have any lateral motion. I've never noticed that, but definitely the up and down. And even so far as if you hold acceleration for a while, like you press on it and it starts to accelerate. And so the front of the car is raised a little bit. You'll actually see the lights adjust at night. And then if you are hard on the brakes, you'll actually see it adjust the other way. Um, it's a really kind of neat effect and I've found that I've never been at a time where I thought that I couldn't see as well as possible uh, due to the headlights. So it's definitely more of a safety feature. They look cool and you get those cool like LED rims around the outside, which I like. But really the, the biggest thing is this is an awesome car for night driving. You can see everything. The field of view is really wide. So I really like the headlights. All right, so on to the third thing that I really like about this car and that is the handling. This car, the handling is so much better than I think a lot of people give it credit. I think it's largely due to the light weight of the car. The wheels are pushed to the outside corners, so really all the, the weight is in the center of the car and the center of gravity is very low, as well as just there's not a lot of weight to move around. So 
It's got fairly wide tires in proportion to the weight and size of the car. So you get excellent, excellent grip. And especially if you're smooth with the throttle and you're really going into a tight corner, this thing really hugs the corners for you. And that's one of the things I've enjoyed the most is that this is a very engaging car to drive. Um, a lot of people look at it and they think, oh, it's just this kind of quirky British car or German car now. Um, it's kind of quirky. It maybe looks kind of neat, but that's kind of it. This is honestly an enthusiast car, in my opinion. So that's one of the most interesting aspects of a car like this, is as soon as you start shedding weight and you go kind of dramatically smaller in a car, your handling is gonna improve dramatically. And that's one of the things I love about this car, is that it handles like a sports car, but it's this kind of everyday looking car. Um, people don't really expect it to handle as well as it does. All right. So the next thing, the fourth thing I really like about this car is the way it makes power across the board. How the power builds, how it sounds, everything. This car is a little rocket ship. Um, I, I actually thought about getting a vanity plate for it. I haven't yet saying something like that. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna get into sport mode here. We're gonna accelerate when we pull onto this road. builds that turbo really kicks in I believe it's a twin scroll turbo I, I don't think it's two I think it's a single turbo but I think it's it's got kind of two modes of operation and it builds power quick now what I like best is that there are two two kind of performance oriented drive modes and the sport modes great it ramps up the boost so that you're always on boost. You give it power at any point and it feels actually kind of like driving a bigger engine, almost like this was an inline six instead of a four. And the lightweight actually like complements that, that it accelerates a lot faster than you'd think. From a perspective of the boost though, I actually prefer mid mode, which is sort of like the halfway between eco mode and sport mode. And the reason for that is that it makes the same amount of power, but it gives you that turbo lag. So you start out low and you know the car accelerates and very quickly as you build RPM, the power builds. So you actually accelerate faster as the RPMs are building, which is a really, really compelling feeling. It, it feels so awesome to startle all of your passengers as you accelerate. And that combined with the handling in the small size means that a windy, twisty road through the countryside is a riot. <laughs> this thing is so much fun. That's one of the things that all of these kind of five points I like contribute to. I mean, I guess maybe the space inside doesn't make the car a lot more fun and the headlights are more of a safety thing. But this car is a blast on back roads and you wouldn't really expect it if you didn't know a little more about this car. Um, and the great part is, being that it's this small car, all the sensation you feel when it accelerates is kind of magnified because it's lightweight, so it's pushing you back. This car can rail through the corners, it can accelerate hard, it can brake really well. Um, it's fantastic. House of Two Minis, another house of two minis. I love this little stretch of road. Um, even before I bought a Mini, I enjoyed this little section of road because you'd see Minis parked in those driveways. And I just the other day realized that second house, in addition to the SUV, they have a two-door uh, hardtop Cooper also. So I thought that was kind of cool. All right, so the fifth thing, the fifth thing that I like about this car and the th one of the things that stands out to me is that it does not draw attention. Nowhere have I gone and someone was like, whoa, cool Mini, and it draws you know, looks and stares and people giving you the thumbs up and wanting you to race them like the Corvette does. Uh, pretty routinely in the Corvette, I get attention like that. And it's a lot of fun. I, I love the enthusiasm and I like sharing that. But sometimes you just wanna go out for a cruise, bomb around some back roads, and not draw attention to yourself. And this is a great car for that. I got it in Thunder Gray. It, it's kind of, I don't wanna say it's a dull color, but I kind of was limited on options since I was really specific about some of the things I wanted inside the car, like the manual, I wanted the LED headlights. And so what's great and what's kind of 
something I've realized since I got it was that it is a very understated car. It's definitely a bit of a sleeper, and you don't get a second glance from anybody, um, which is nice. You know, you can zip around some back roads, and people will be looking at the bright red car ahead of you, or they'll be looking at whatever just went by and was making a lot of noise. This is a, a stealth car, essentially, and so that's kind of a nice feature. It's not something I really ever had thought about before I got the car. So anyway, those are the five things I love about the Mini. Um, kind of the five things that stand out. There is a lot more to love. This might be groundbreaking for some people, especially anyone who's never driven in one of these. This is a enthusiast car, 100%. It's got a manual. You actually are like engaged while you're driving. It handles good. It sounds good. It's fast. This is startlingly fast. The number of people that I've taken out in this and accelerated through the first couple of gears and they're like, holy cow, like what? They think it's modded, they think it's, no, this is a stock Cooper S, I've done nothing to it. So anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, if you like the video, consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up, and until next time, Fred out.